Hey guys, my name is Summer Myers. I am a homeschool mom of five kids. I've been doing this for quite a few years now, and I wanted to talk to you about math curriculums and what we use in our homeschool. Specifically today, I wanted to show you our math manipulatives and how I store them and what we use and why and how we incorporate that and why I think it's important to use them. Not only that, Henry is taking a nap. My big kids are upstairs cleaning and Juliet, Juliet? Hi, Juliet is eating lunch. So she's over there. She's just eating. So um, you know, she squeals because she's over there eating lunch. I went to a homeschool conference about two years ago and I went to a talk that this woman gave and it was fantastic. And I went and I found her afterwards and I said, whatever you're doing for your children for math, I want to do that too. And she took me back to a booth and she said this, this is what you want to use. And we had been, we had used master books, we had played with easy peasy, we had used a couple of different things and none of them were clicking for my kids. Uh, part of that was learning style, part of it was just my own hangups about public school teaching and public school math. Uh, but this, this is what grounded us and it really, really works and it works well. And not only that, because I have so many kids and so many different age ranges using it, I have done a, B, C, D, and we're just starting E. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so I can see where the progression is leading up to and I am all for it. So today let's talk about the math manipulatives that you use for Right Start Math. And the reason why I'm doing the manipulatives first and then next week I'll do the workbooks and kind of a breakdown of the lesson plans. None of that would make sense unless you see the manipulatives first. So not every lesson has a math manipulative, but the ones that do are the ones that really stick. And that's really the backbone and foundation for Right Start Math are these really great games and hands-on learning experiences that you can physically use and touch. So for your little wiggles, you know, your, your upcoming kindergartners, first graders, second graders, even into your bigger kids, like your 11, 12 year olds, those are what holds, hold their attention and also what helps retain memory. So if you have a kinesthetic learner, dude, let me tell you, this is, this is the way to go. Okay. So let's get to it. So the biggest thing that Right Start Math uses is this basic number card deck. It's literally just one through 10. Okay. Um, and what they do is they have all these games that use all of these cards. Uh, so the biggest one I think they refer to as go to the dump and it's an addition game for, and it's probably one of the most famous things that Right Start is known for, is where kids go and they deal out cards and it's like go fish. Um, instead of matching pairs that, you know, the cards two and two, it would be cards that add up to 10 or cards that add up to 15. So two plus eight, that's a match that equals 10. So you would lay that down. Do you got any eights? Go to the dump. Do you got any twos? Go to the dump. Um, and it's one of, it's just, it's a silly game, but it was one of those things that just was a total complete game changer for my first grader right out of public school. It, it changed her perception of doing worksheet. I mean, this poor child, man, can we talk this? Can we talk this poor child? She had gone through so many workbooks of just drill, kill. We're going to do these addition problems over and over and over again. And my third grader was almost completely brain dead because of the amount of multiplication, mastery cards, flash cards, videos we watched, anything. I was like, I got to figure out a way to just imprint this on their brains. That's that's engaging and fun. And and flashcards, you guys, they're not fun. And and those videos, those songs, they're cute, but they're not fun. And you know, it it does stick, but does it stick long term? So Right Start Math, all about it with these games, it is fun. And it and it makes you want to know the math facts so you can win the game. And even if you don't win, there's still sense of accomplishment. You know what I mean? Like, even though I didn't get all the pairs my go to the dump game, I still managed to do all of it and I did it in my head and I didn't even think about it. I mean, that was what was so brilliant about these games. So 
Right Start Math also has this yellow book and it is filled. I mean, even if you decide not to do the Right Start curriculum, but you are tearing your hair, head out, hair out, don't tear your head out. That would be awful. You are tearing your hair out about how to get your kids to know their math facts. Take a look at this book. Um, you can find these you know, for cheap on eBay. I've seen them all over the place on, you know, homeschool curriculum websites that are exchanging them. So, I mean, you can get them used pretty easily. And all of it is just games. Games to use, the majority of them with these card decks to learn math facts. Okay, so we've got our basic card deck. Let's talk about some of the other card decks that we've got here. Guys, they've got so many card games. So the basic card deck is for pretty much through the entire levels. Like it, they just use them for every single thing. In the beginning for level A, a lot of the cards that they use are these ones right here. So we've got, these are dot cards. The, so this is connected to the abacus, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, it's helping to visualize big numbers all together. Uh, so when you break them down, like obviously this is a 10, you've got five and four. Five. And so when a kid is playing with that, they see and they visualize and they're able to add it and understand it a lot quicker and easier. And it's a stepping stone for card game stepping stone for using the actual abacus is what they use for adding all kinds of stuff. So they use those cards. These are tally marks. This is another way that level A goes through to do number visual visualization. Um, so they've got these tally cards. So here's another way that they visualize numbers. This is another dots. So it's different from this. This is more toward, geared towards the abacus. So you've got five and five, right? And then they've got numbers here. So this is hands, this is two, right? So you've got one hand, two. What's the point of all these little card decks for level A? Uh, the biggest part with level A is about um, visualizing numbers. So my kindergartner she didn't know how to write her numbers really until just like you know like a month or two until we were done but she knew how to add like crazy and she knew recognized numbers and she could count to 100 easily and i credit a lot of it to these game cards that we use um because the focus was not um associating a number group with a like a letter number, because that's so abstract. I mean, you know, a number one, you draw one, okay, but do, how does that mean one thing? It's just, it's a representative number, right? I mean, even Roman numerals do a better job with that. Um, so the level A is mostly about identifying numbers and giving the child number sense. So these are the cards that they do that for the majority of the time. They also have a fraction card deck. So they do a lot of like war games or whatever. So they have these cards that are just all basically fractions, but they also have percentages here. Um, let's see if I can find the percentages. Here they are. <laughs> I haven't used this particular percentage, 66 and two thirds percent. You know, I don't know what that one's about, but um, they have regular percentages. So it's not just the basic card deck, which is one through zero. They do other games that involve other parts of math. So here we have a fractions. Here we have a money card deck with all the coins, um, easy, recognizable, quick, it's another card game, easy to grab and use. They also have timed cards. Look at this. I mean, this, it's hard to understand, but this is like 40 minutes, right? Um, so they have it laid out with like a clock or whatever, and your child is supposed to put them all the way around. So you gotta find, here's 12, you gotta put 12 at the top of the clock. Here's 40, you gotta put it down by the eight, right? And they have them in different colors, so you play off of each other. Again, just, you know, this idea that playing with your child with math helps them retain and understand it so much better. Okay, another famous game that is all from Right Start Math is this game called Corners. And Corners is actually, it's a really fun game. It's an addition game, but they also do it for, uh, they have a couple of multiplication games that I'm aware of that they use for this as well, but it's mostly for addition, mastery. Um, and they do it for, I think the original is adding up to 15. So you're matching 
a number. So let's see. Oh, so it's matching a number between five, 10, and 15 and then if you can get 20 points or whatever so for two you could put a three red three on the side of there and that would equal five you get five points if you can get it with a corner and we'll demonstrate that um, then you get an extra additional points and it's just this idea of playing through mastery playing to gain mastery. So those are all the cards that they use for their games. There are so many varieties and ways to use it. The maintain and retain math facts. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot one. Okay, so the last card one is the multiplication card deck. And I have a love-hate relationship with all of these. So they're all in envelopes, right? Um, let's look at the two times. So they've got it covered, thank goodness, because otherwise. Um, they have them all listed out two, four, six, eight, ten, right? So for like the fives card deck, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Inside each envelope are those numbers, yeah? And they use it for multiplication mastery. So sometimes they'll say, take out four of these card decks and play a game with them. And they'll have a couple of suggestion activities. And that's how, it's honestly how my oldest learned her math facts is from playing games with these envelopes. Um, sometimes you mix them with the basic card deck. Caveat being, then you have to like sort them all out. I normally, what I do is I, I say, here you guys go, you sort these out while I go make some dinner. All right, so those are all the cards that we use for Right Start Math. Those are all the card games that, or the cards that have card games associated with them. So now we're gonna look at some of the other stuff we've got. Okay, I'm trying to decide what's the best way to do this. Uh, so we're gonna go first with level A stuff and then we'll work our way up. But I, I want you to know that you use these pretty much for every single level, but the ones that make the most sense will stick with level A. So the next group is, these are called place value cards. Um, and basically they're just cards with numbers printed on them you build numbers with them. So you're taking numbers out and you're telling your child, okay, can you please find 162? They, they look through the card deck until they find 100, put the 60 on top and then two. And that just adds to their number sense and awareness. It adds to this idea of building up So you know place value I think is one of those things that a lot of kids it either clicks in their brain or it doesn't. I, my middle child, she, it did not click. I mean, we did place value village and we got the blocks out and we got, you know, we counted, we put together a hundred penny, you know, like it was, it was not clicking for her. And I, and I couldn't, I was just, couldn't figure out what can I do to get you to understand where place value is and remembering it. And these cards saved our lives. This is what we used for her to understand. Oh, I can't just stick numbers anywhere they have to follow a certain order. They have to follow the 100s order, 10s, and 1s. And, and it's ultimately because of these cards. And I've seen these on Montessori websites. They have like the wooden ones or whatever. Does somebody understand what's up with Montessori and wood? I mean, I get that it's natural. Anyway, with level A, the biggest thing is understanding uh, number sense. And if you don't know what I mean by number sense, it's by assigning a number like two with two things. It's saying, okay, you can count to 10 on your fingers. Now we're going to associate that number with a physical object. They also have these tally sticks and this was a great way of uh, laying it out on the table and showing how the numbers are built up. So you've got four and then the tally stick five and it was just an easy way for, it was just another tool in your toolbox to get them to identify with a number, with a physical object. So you could do it with the blocks, but I felt like this was an easy way to stack it and to show it and group it all together easily. And all they are are popsicle sticks, but no, they're not, they're tally sticks, they're fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. All the math manipulatives for Right Start Math, it comes with a calculator. They do quite a, they do a couple of games with the calculator. I wouldn't call them necessarily games so much as like, hey, this is a fun thing you can do. And it teaches you with this. I don't think level A did a whole lot. They may have one or two lessons with the calculator. 
you really start using the calculator a lot more and I'd say level D. Um, it was just something that they pulled it out to look at it and be like, oh look, you can punch these numbers in, but it wasn't super in depth until further on. As far as geometry goes, I feel like we talk about geometry and shapes and we see it all in 2D. Bright Start Math has like actual blocks and these blocks are so much fun and every time and honestly I get these out all the time for my baby because he loves to stack them and play with them um, but physically seeing them and being able to hold them and touch them and one of my kids favorite games is we put them in a bag that's you can't like a I don't know like a canvas bag or something a tote and you put it in and then they feel around inside the bag and they're like that's a cone and they pull it out and oh yeah it's a cone so it's another way of getting their brain working and figuring out that pattern so they have a bunch of these that have cylinders and half circles and pyramids and cubes and it's um adding language and vocabulary so they do this in every single level and they build up on it at each level so in the first level a it's all about learning the new words and not necessarily like I mean, there's identification, obviously, but it's not super heavy. It's like three or four lessons. And then further on, it gets bigger and heavier and talking about sides versus faces and comparing, you know, a cube versus a square and what's the difference. Some good stuff here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is this hand balance. I think you see these um, pretty frequently in the back of like homeschoolers, <laughs> like stash of stuff. Can you all see that? That better? I can see it a little better. Okay, so within the math balance, you know, you would think it's all about like, okay, let's balance it. So you put one there and you put one there and la la, it balances. Um, and it does do that, but it's mostly about incorporating how you can incorporate patterns into it. So it's about finding like addition. So if you put 10 right here, y'all see that? I put one of my weights on 10. How can I make it balance on the side using two? Okay, so I've got six here. If I put it on the four, ta-da, it's balanced. And so that's just reinforcing this idea that um, math is fairly predictable, but not only that, that you can find it in different ways. It's not just, you know, so like subjective, like so far removed. It's just a worksheet, four plus six equals 10, you can find it repeated in many different forms, including in balancing. And I think like mind blown, I mean, I can geek out about this, uh, but it, I think Right Start Math does such a good job of um, incorporating this idea that math is not just flat, dry, only one way to find the solution. They find patterns in everything and they use the math balance really well doing that. There's multiple ways that they use it. It's not just the one thing. And if you're like me, I'm not a minimalist by an extreme, but the idea of just having a big old fat math balance just because it makes my homeschool look pretty and we only take it out, meh, you know, every once in a while so we can balance some blue things, you know, it's like, what's the point of that? It does more than that. And I think, and I find that really comforting that they, they find multiple uses for all of their manipulatives. It's not just frivolous adding, packing things in so they can up their price. I mean, it's useful stuff. All the math manipulatives, they come with a whiteboard. This is actually brand new. I just bought another one. Um, I have an old one. It's all scratched and beat up, but these are really nice. I just, I, I ended up just buying another one directly from the company because, you know, you see those in Target or Walmart or even the dollar store has them, and those are really nice too because they've got the, anyway, you can find them pretty much anywhere. They're rather flimsy though. This is solid, guys. And if you take care of it, it lasts forever, and it's really nice. And I I just thought we needed to, and we have used them. They're the perfect size to, and I incorporate it for everything. I use it for my English, I use it for math. Um, I don't have a big whiteboard or chalkboard hanging up. I don't, I don't see the reason for that. Um, if I need a big poster board, I'll create something and put it onto the side. But otherwise, there isn't a whole lot of need for that for our homeschool. Let me just add a note here too. If you have a child who has like sweaty hands, hands that struggle with working with worksheets or whatever, guys, 
a whiteboard. So I have a child who has high, high is a big word. I'll put it down here. It's a big word on her hands and her feet. So she just sweats like crazy and they just drip sweat, poor darling. Um, and I remember her coming home just in tears because she couldn't do her worksheets at school. And when we started, and I wasn't, I didn't understand because I never sat with her to do schoolwork until we started homeschooling. And I was like, oh baby, you really, you really can't just write your name. Your worksheet gets soaked. And so we started switching all of her workbook work onto a whiteboard. It was a total game changer. So rather than worrying about, you know, whether her sweaty hands are going to ruin her paper, she could actually focus on like spelling words or she could actually focus on finishing a math problem. So if you have a child who struggles with that, highly recommend just getting a small little whiteboard that they can use. So totally worth it. Okay, we've talked about cards. We've talked about a couple of other physical things. Um, some of their other physical things that they have, they have a bag of money. Um, I mean, we also have just a bag of actual money, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. There's something fun about play money. Level A uses it to sort. You, you I wouldn't say it's big in level B and it's, it's gone by level C. They don't use it anymore. Um, but it is good for identification. This is an excellent way to teach skip counting. So they have a lot of games with that. Um, coins. Uh, they also have these little blue blocks. They're kind of like the place value blocks that you see. They are weighted for to supposedly to be one gram. So we use it for our scale. They're also supposed to be one centimeter in length. I think they're off. <laughs> they're not perfect, which drives me crazy. However, it's excellent for showing, like it teaching measurement. So if this is one centimeter and you've got 10 of these, you know, along your pencil, that's a really long pencil, but you've got 10 of those along a pencil, it's now 10 centimeters. So that's how we count with it. That's how we measure with it. Um, we also use it for showing uh, like area. Like if you've got it stacked out in a certain way, then, then you can do like, oh, that is, you know, four squared or whatever. There's a lot of practical uses for that. I would say that most of these are used in the higher levels. So coins are used for the lower levels. These are used more in the bigger. These little tiles become your best friends. <laughs> so these are used all the time in level A to show patterns, to show A, B, C pattern, show A, B pattern, um, to show number value, like so you're, you know, you can count it off by fives, you can count it off by tens. These are also one inch across, so you can also measure across, just like we use with our blue squares. If you've got five of these, then it is five inches across. Uh, there's also a little bit of area um, introduction with these as well. If you're, you're stacking them up, then this takes an area. You can also find the perimeter of objects. So, I mean, they use a lot of these and they're a lot of fun and my kids frequently just get them out to like stack them and build pyramids. It's, they're fun to play with, which is what math manipulative should be. Math manipulative should be fun to play with. If they are not fun, if they aren't interesting, or if you're like, do not touch these, these are for homeschool, you're missing a very big chance for children to reconnect and to, you know, explore and learn on their own terms. So make sure that you're not locking these away where they can't get at them. I understand if you've got like a toddler who will just dump stuff out, but it's important that your children have access to them so they can play with them. Frequently, I'll just leave them out after we've done a schooling lesson for their younger siblings to have kind of uh, supervised play with it just because there are little pieces and I don't wanna lose them. But I think it is important that they have a chance to just mess with it so when they it's familiar to them when we get it to a math lesson and they're like oh i've already made that connection anyway so the right start math comes with a clock i happen to have three i think when you're a homeschooler you just are automatically guaranteed to have a judy clock and i don't know where i picked up all of these honestly so these are really great i like this is actually the one i use the most because it's a little easier to move around but it does come with this this is learning resources i think rainbow resources puts these out a lot i love these because and these all all three of my clocks have these um they do 5 10 15 so it shows you the minute hand there are notches for them 
Uh, the hour hand moves when you move the minute hand. The minute hand does not. That's okay. Um, I think, you know, I was talking to a mom the other day who has a rising kindergartner and she's like, we're trying to teach her how to read a clock. Guys, <laughs> clock learning is something that is rather advanced because you have skip counting involved with 5, 10, 15, 20. You also have another set of numbers that, I mean, it's just a lot going on with this face of clock. If you really wanna teach your child how to read a clock, get them a wristwatch, not a digital wristwatch, but a, an actual face analog clock. Also, we've put up clocks in all of their bedrooms and so they know by 7.30, by eight o'clock, lights are out they can keep track of their own time. And that's something that they have picked up on naturally without me forcing it on them. But Right Start Math does a lot of, not a ton with this. I think they do a lot of warm up problems with this where you're like, okay, find, you know, 2.30 uh, and you can, and they can swish it around. But they do more clockwork with, um, with the cards. And I find that helpful because they can manipulate the numbers on an actual clock you can't move these numbers around. You can't really cover them up very easily. Um, so I have mixed feelings about teaching how to read a clock with an actual clock. Um, you need children to be able to manipulate and move things around and just moving this around ain't gonna cut it very easily. So I think this is absolutely included, but there are a myriad of other ways to teach how to read a clock. And Right Start Math does that. Kudos to them. They also have tangrams, so they have two sets. They have a green set and a yellow set. Y'all see that? So the tangram pieces are mostly used on forming uh, different types of shapes and explaining right angles um, versus, you know, acute. Um, and it's also just exploring 2D shapes. Another great thing, these are also good for perimeters. It's also good for areas, but it's also good in showing that Shapes aren't just, you draw them out and that's what they are. Shapes can be found within shapes and, and there's another chance to explore and play with shape creating. Is that a thing? It should be a thing. They have so much stuff, guys. This is a long video. The, so this is going up to level D level E work. Um, they have these drawing tools. So you're learning, I don't, I assume this is what architects use. If you're an architect, can you comment below and confirm or deny? Um, they have these graphing triangles. These are used to graph um, in the older levels. It's to create um, perfectly straight lines, perfect right angles. It drove my oldest nuts. She was like, oh my gosh, mom, do we really have to? But it gave her an appreciation for creating perfect angles and perfect shapes. And at first it drove her crazy, but then she realized this is actually kind of fun to make it perfect. Um, and these tools gave her that confidence that it was okay to, to spend time on it and work with it. I'm looking up what this is called. It's a goniometer. So you've got um, numbers here and an angle and this lifts up and it's just a way of drawing. It's kind of like a compass uh, to draw a perfect angle. So they've got that. Uh, it also comes with a protractor, another way of finding angles and straight lines. Okay, so this is like my childhood. I just, I remember playing with these all through elementary school and having so much fun with them. And my girls just squealed when we pulled these out of our box two years ago and it was so much fun and they still play with them. Um, so this one has a circle on the back. This is good for showing fractions. It's also good for clockwork, learning how to use the clock. It comes with a bunch of rubber bands um, and talking about perimeter, talking about shapes, talking about right angles, all kinds of work that the Right Start Math uses with these. So this is called a geometry reflector. We used it a lot in level A, level B, where you are reflecting the mirror image on the other side. This is probably one of the coolest things that I was so excited for, uh, for Right Start Math. I'm gonna build one really quick, cause I can. So here is a geometry panel. This is obviously a cube. 
that's hollow. So we put our little blue cubes inside of that to show area. We use this a lot in level D and up. So we, I think I cracked it open maybe in level B and maybe in level C, did not at all in level A. So this is kind of for the higher levels um, to show different. So there was a lot of like um, volume, a lot of area. How many of these would you have to build in order to fill up an entire room? It kind of also is expanding on this idea of understanding math numbers that are a lot bigger, like in the billions and in the millions. I guess that's a smaller number. These are just so much fun and my kids love playing with these. All right, so this does not come with Right Start Math. This is a Jump Start Kids and it's a number jumper. So you lay this out and the kids jump from number to number. This is excellent for skip counting. This is excellent for just moving your body during a really long lesson. Sometimes when my kindergartner was just like super antsy, I would get this out and she would just jump from number to number. She was practicing how to um, count up to 100 at the time and she would do that a lot. It was also just learning how to count up by tens counting up by fives, and it was easy to see it on this. Um, and it just changed a lot of different, it just changed her view on how to count with numbers. So if you want, and I'll link it down below, um, this does not come with Right Start Math. This is something a good friend of mine found and gave to me and said, you should check this out. And it's been really wonderful and great, and we really love it. So the last cards that they do are these base 10 picture cards. Honestly, we have only used this in a couple of games. Um, I think we would probably use it more if we were struggling more with place value, but my kids don't, so they, we haven't needed it as much, but there's definitely more games for these. So you are like uh, borrowing and transitioning from like a group of 10 to a base card of 100. There's a, there's a really fun game that my middle kid really enjoyed. It was a banking game and she would count and add up and we used our place value cards with that. And I think that's pretty much all we use these cards for. I think part of the brilliant thing about Right Start Math is that they are very uh, like focused on and intentional when they are teaching certain types of math, like clocks like place value. And this is the same with fractions. So they have this fraction card chart and it's just a poster you can't take apart, but it also comes with a whole bunch of cards and you can lay the cards out. You can actually physically take them apart and you can see, okay, this is half of one and you can stack it up there or you can place it on the bottom. They have a couple of games using these uh, fraction cards, but I honestly, it just makes the most sense when you're seeing okay, here's a group of 10, this equals one, so one tenth. I just, I think they're so brilliant with this and all the games that they use with the fraction cards are really well thought out and I really enjoy them. All right, so this would not be a right start math review if we didn't talk about our good friend, the abacus. So the abacus is one of those things that is just the cornerstone of right start math and everything it stands for and what they believe in and what they're trying to accomplish here you use this for every single level all the way up i had never used an abacus before i think we had one growing up but i had no idea i kind of had a vague idea of how to use one this has been such a game changer in understanding number sense and visualizing groups of numbers it's excellent for skip counting it's excellent for well, obviously for addition, for subtraction, showing physically how the numbers are moving and changing based on whatever function you are using. Um, it's got a backside to it as well, so you can add bigger numbers. So for this one in particular, the front side is one through 100, and so you can add obviously between all of those, but what if you have a bigger number than that? They got you covered with the back, and then you're doing it up and down instead of, um, side to side like this with, but then they also have these number cards. These are called abacus tiles. And so after you have added up to 100 and you're still counting, cause they'll typically teach you how to count up to 100 and then they're like, okay, so keep going, go out to 110. 
10. Well, you can't just do 110 and just pretend. So you have a little abacus card that you add to the side and you say 110, 120. Um, it makes more sense that way. They've got several of these. And if you have more than one kid that's doing this right start math, absolutely invest in two abacuses. How often have I had two kids working on different problems and worksheets and they need an abacus and rather than share, they have one of their own. So I don't think there's, I mean, unless you have like 11 kids doing this program, um, there isn't a real whole need to have more than those two. That That's usually, I think that's pretty good. Um, so I have two and it's just made my life so much easier. Just a thought that I'd squeeze in there. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff. How do you store all of this? So I have a three drawer set and I store it in a couple of ways. The top drawer is all of my cards that I put up there. Then I have the second drawer and that has all of my like physical manipulatives, like the tiles, like the coins. Um, and then I have my last drawer and it's all the flat pieces. But honestly, I think I need another one because <laughs> it's sometimes a little, it's a bit of a struggle to get them in and out. I got this at Aldi, I don't know how many years ago, and I think I got it for like $15 and I tried to find another one. I'll link it down below on Amazon, but I think it's like $44. So don't spend that much money, please, <laughs> on these boxes. As great as they are, there's gotta be something more affordable. I'm gonna check at Walmart and see if they have it. And if they do, I will mention that down in the comments that I did find it there. So that's how I store it, store all of this stuff. And it's easy access. It's easy for me to just like reach down here while we're doing school, pull it out, pop it on the table, reach back, put it away. All right, guys, that is it for me today. Those are all the math manipulatives that Right Start Math that we use. I I really love this program. If you liked this video, stick town, stick around for next week. I'm going to be going through the actual workbooks for levels A, B, C, D, possibly E, because you know why not. Um, hopefully, I'm also be able to do a couple of like lessons that you can see and here in real time so you can understand how you can implement them in your own homeschool. So if you liked this video, like, if you were interested in seeing more of those videos, subscribe, support my brand new channel in its infancy and see how we grow and how we zoom because that's how we do it. And that is it. Take it easy. Bye. Let's check and see, make sure we're covered. Okay, we're covered. Right start back. Okay. And then there was one. <laughs> COVID. Oh, here we go. Oh my gosh. Oh. No. Oh, so much stuff. What? Okay, put it away. Put it away. What? Put it away. Okay. <clears throat> Spoonful of sugar style um, to make the medicine go down. I don't know if that matters to you or not. Oops. Welcome to my TED talk. Okay. The oh, allergies. <laughs> Do you hear them roaring upstairs? <laughs> they're supposed to be cleaning. I don't know what they're doing. Okay, the problem with, as awesome as this is, I have to frequently just go through it and make sure everything's put away. Anything else that I wanna talk about? Not math manipulatives.